The, the word tells us all things were made by him and for him and without him there was nothing made. So if God is God all by himself and meaning that he's self-sufficient, meaning he doesn't need our praise or our worship. God doesn't need us to make him feel like he's God. Amen? Amen. When I think about the beginning, everything God did <laughs> was for us. How many of you notice God didn't need a garden? God can't be restrained by something that's by the hands of man, something that's created by a box. The, 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 the sky and the space itself cannot contain God. The, the word says that the earth is his footstool. What am I trying to get us to understand tonight? That God is so awesome and God is so powerful that <laughs> everything, when God said, let there be light, the light wasn't for God because he is light. When God says to, and he says, let the, the firmament bring forth animals at this kind, God didn't, that wasn't for God, amen? amen? God doesn't need those things. Those things is because he loves. Somebody look at and say, me. me. It's an interesting thing how religion a lot of times tries to get you to believe that you have to earn a love from a God that loved you when he created you. Amen? Trying to get you to believe that you got you have to do this and do meet all these certain different type of quotas to earn the love of God. When yet the Bible says he formed man from the dust. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says he blew into his nostrils and made him a living soul. Isn't it interesting when he blew into his nostrils and made his living soul? Then man began to make all these divisions and all these separation situations to hate one another when sin came into the picture. It wasn't of a man and God at first. It wasn't all this division and all this separation with just man and God, amen? And God is what? So it was just man and who? Love. Amen? But I want to, what God spoke today, what God was, and it's interesting how this message was birthed because I was like, okay, Lord. Um, God began to deal with me about something. I was thinking, you know, you, you, you be pondering things in life, man. I do. I ponder some things in life and, and trials and sometimes the tribulation situations make you ponder things and God utilizes those things that we ponder and what we go through to begin to speak to give understanding. And I want y'all to write this down. It's time to walk like you're anointed. It's time to walk like, you're, like you are anointed. Amen. We need to stop talking about the anointing and walk like you are anointed. Amen. We need to stop talking like, man, um, I'm going to be anointed one day. You know what I'm saying? People ask my, he's anointed, he, she's anointed. No, I want y'all to understand something too. The anointing is not just for Pacific people. Amen. The anointing is not for, I know, and I know some of us thinking, well, you know, when the and God, man, God had to, he really dealt with me about this. Is gonna be, I want you to hear this word because it's interesting. Because I, I and I'm going to tell you what I was thinking when God, when he, when he says, you know, uh, a little bit while, a little bit after that, I wrote down, I was thinking, if I was to be taken, which person should I look to pour into, to lead in charge? And I don't know why that thing came across my mind. I said, if I was like, if God was going to take me, what? And it's funny, I thought about that for me. It wasn't like a mere thought. I thought about it for a moment. How you know sometimes God lets you ponder certain things for a second just to, to teach you something? And let me tell you what God, and I heard God speak to me so clear. When I pondered, I thought I heard the Lord speak this to me. He said, God said to me, that's a small thing to look to one person. I said, huh? He said, that's a small thing to look to one person. Now remember my thought was, if I was to, if God was to remove, take me, I'm going home, what, who would I look to pour into? And you know, I'm going to show you something, that, we look at that because we think about Elijah, Elisha, we look, we think about um, the Old Testament, amen? We think about the Old Testament, so we, in the Old Testament, you always see the mantle being handled from one person to the next person. 
And a lot of times in churches we see people go, they, they do the, they come from the Old Testament and they talk about the mantle being like you'll see the mantle uh, being passed from. I remember there was a pastor who said he would, he he was with this other pastor and he passed the mantle to him. And that's interesting because God spoke to me and said that's a small thing. And I'm like to so talk about passing what God has given to you to one person. And I thought, I'm not even going to just say it like this. God said to me, it's the, that's a small thing to look to one person to pour what God has poured into you to lead. Amen? When you are called to pour into, every, into everyone I sent to you to lead. Amen. See, God began, he shook me for me. He said, let me explain something. He says, it's a small thing when you only look to touch one person in your life. But when God touches your life, your life should illuminate to be able to touch everybody in your life. Amen. Life doesn't just touch one area. Life light up everything around you. So I'm like, okay, God, I'm like, I, I, this is interesting. God says, he says, it's a small thing, like, it's a small thing, he says. I'm thinking about what he says. He said, because that which I have poured into you, you should be looking to pour it into anyone and everyone I send to you. Amen. It's amazing how many people perceive that they are anointed, but they're only anointed to touch the people they want to touch. Jesus. Amen? They say they have power. There are people who are anointed, but they are anointed, but they only, they say, I'm anointed, but I'm only anointed to touch white people. I'm anointed, but I'm only anointed to touch black people. I'm anointed, but I'm only anointed to touch women. I'm anointed, but I'm anointed, and I'm only to, to, to touch men. Mm. Maybe we don't understand what it means to be anointed. Because when David was anointed by Saul, he was anointed in a position of kingship. So what he was anointed as gave him authority to operate in. Amen? So watch this. So if you take the anointing and say, well, I'm only anointed to touch a select of people then that means you, you, have, you only have power to affect the people that you say that you can touch. But maybe we don't understand the anointing, like I said, because what's interesting, the anointing today, the oil that they used in the daily time, they would, Saul and they would use oil, I mean, they, they would use oil and they would anoint it. It's not the oil anymore. It's not the oil anymore. Because remember now, whatever, I want you to this. Whatever you are anointed means you now have a power, means you have been given power and authority to walk in that. Amen. So, if we're going to, if it's time to walk like you're anointed, you must understand what you are anointed as. Amen. Well, let me help you. <laughs> the Bible says that when Jesus came to um, when he came to John the Baptist, when John the Baptist saw Jesus far off, he said unto him, the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. Amen? Amen. And he baptized Jesus. But what was funny, when he baptized Jesus, Jesus was like, I'm not worried, but Jesus went through the baptism just to show the process. Amen. But when Jesus came up out of the water, the Bible says that the spirit, like a dove, but it wasn't a dove, like a dove, came upon Jesus, if I said anointed. anointed. And came upon him, and the Father spoke when the spirit came upon him, said, this is my son, and whom I am well pleased. So even though Jesus, when he saw Jesus, he said, that's the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. He began to speak 
on his assignment, it was God who spoke on his anointing. See, to fulfill his assignment, he had to be anointed. Given power. But the power he was given was the power that came from sonship. Even when Jesus, the Bible says, when the Spirit came upon him, the Spirit ushered him into the wilderness. Watch this. Satan is not worried about your assignment if you're not anointed. You're just a flodger. You have a form and a fashion of God with no power to do anything. You know how to entertain people. There's a lot going on today. We're gonna, we're gonna, we want to be, I'm, I'm, God setting us up for where we're going. This is a lot of this is going on today. People who have a form and a fashion of godliness but have no power at all. But don't think that strange because in the book of Acts there was a there was a, his name was Simon the sorcerer. Simon the sorcerer. The Bible says he bewitched many people. The Bible says from the greatest to the smallest. Meaning he had many people deceived. Meaning, let's look at it. If he said from the greatest to the smallest, meaning he would have politicians and he would have big time leaders fool, and he would have the common person fool. He bewitched them and they perceived that he was from God. Simon the saucer was not anointed. Amen. But Jesus, the Spirit came upon him and said, This is my Son, and whom I am well pleased. When the Spirit ushered him into the wilderness, watch this, to be tried by the adversary, the adversary didn't try him because he didn't come at him because he had gifts and talents. The first thing the adversary came at him was, was to challenge his anointing. Why? Because your whatever has anointed you has solidified your power source. Amen. Thank you. When they anointed, when Samuel anointed David, it solidified that David was going to be the king over Israel. Everybody understand? When he put that all on David, and David, that's why David didn't let Saul dress him in his armor. He was bringing it to a new change. It was a change coming. Amen. It was coming from what kind of change? Watch this. There was a change coming from a king after people's heart to a king after God's heart. Because remember now, Saul was a king that came from the people. He was a king that desired to please the people. Though God gave it to him, and that's why God told him, he told Saul, they don't reject you, they rejected me. Amen. Give them what they want. God gave them what they want. How many of you know that God will give you what you want? Amen. If you want something to make your flesh feel good, God will give you what you want. That's why he said in the last day, people have itchy ears. They're not going to want sound doctrine. They're going to want doctrine to make them feel good. Y'all with me? You want to have white people, we're going to want white doctrine. You want to have black people, we're going to want black doctrine. But then there's going to be those who want to say, they're going to want spiritual doctrine. Spiritual doctrine. Because last time I checked, <laughs> From the dust, his external body was formed from the dust, but he had no life until the spirit was there. So the life is not in the flesh, it's in the So people go around trying to get their identity in the flesh, they are being deceived. Because life is not in the flesh, it's in the Because the flesh going back to the but the absent from the body present with the Lord. Trouble. 
Amen. Amen. So Adam, now we gotta get this. I want, I want I'm taking God taking us taking some place. So Jesus being anointed by the Spirit. Y'all with me? That cried out son. David was anointed by Samuel, appointed by God. Well, Samuel didn't even know which one. He didn't even know. I want to let you know when he put it back up. He didn't know which one. Samuel actually, when he went to choose, Samuel was looking at the external, trying to choose by the flesh. Like some of us do in relationships. Trying to choose your boot by the flesh. Choose your little lady by the flesh. That's why the Bible says when a man finds a wife, he finds a what? But then the same Bible says that's one good or what? So what's, if the spirit ain't in her, she ain't nothing, ain't nothing I promise she ain't nothing good in her. I know she's a cook, but ain't nothing good in her. I know she's very smart and intellectually wise, but there's nothing good in her. I know she got hips and lips, but ain't nothing good in her. She don't have a what? The spirit. I know he fine, ladies. I know he can say, he girl, he's six foot two, six foot five. He know how to lay it down, but he ain't got the spirit. See, I want to play these little games. He know how to sauce you. <laughs> you know. Before he devour you. Just enough pepper. Just enough salt. Just enough to devour you. But if he doesn't have the then he or she or they are not they are not anointed. And if they are not anointed, they have no power to destroy the yoke. It's a terrible thing to be with somebody and can't help you get free. It's a terrible thing to be with somebody and be in bondage and they perceive the only freedom you can get is making you feel good for five minutes. You know, some churches like that can hype you up, make you feel good with that, like sex, make you feel good for five minutes, but after that five minutes you still got that same problem you had before, because you wouldn't deliver, why? Because you didn't run into the anointing. So you didn't, you didn't run into the spirit that convicts you. You didn't run into the spirit that caused you to see what you, the position and the condition that you're in. You need to repent. Look at someone say, you need to turn around. Turn around. Say, I know, you, I know people have hurt you. I know people have wounded you. I know people have done you wrong. But God wants to give you a turnaround. It's time for the victim mentality to leave. Amen. Amen. See, as soon as Jesus went into the wilderness, Satan said, if I be the son, somebody gonna get this. Why didn't Satan say something else? Why did he say it? If, if you be the one with power, if you be the chosen one, he said, if I be the son, read it for yourself. When Satan first ever spoke to Jesus, his first comments to Jesus, if I be the son, he challenged his anointing. Yes, yes. He challenged his source of power and connection and relationship. Yes, yes. He said, I'm not looking at your flesh. I'm not looking at you. There's something dwelling inside of you. And if you be the son, turn this stone into bread. But a true son and daughter that's anointed came back and said like this. Men shall not live by bread alone. He came back and the adversary explained to him is that my power source is not intangible things. My power source comes from the one who I'm connected to. And then you hear Jesus say, hey, I only say what I hear my father say. I only do what I... See, 
see my father do. I'm not here to show up to you. You know, we got people, all they love is show up. Some people study the Bible just to show up. So they can run into people and get into intellectual, unspiritual conversations and debates about God. Notice how I say unspiritual. Babbles, fables, fables, foolishness. Nothing that brings life. Nothing that edifies to exalt and come. Just things that bring conflict. Things that bring division and separation. And usually they're about carnality. Carnal things, earthly things. You know, like, I'm a Catholic, you're a Baptist. You're Jehovah Witness. I'm a, 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 seven days. Religious foolishness that has nothing to do with relationship, position, or anointing. Jesus is the seed sent from heaven to produce the harvest on earth. Amen. 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 Now, I set it up. Y'all with me? So when God told me what I poured into you, you don't look to pour into one person, but everyone I sent you. So let me tell you something. If you, I don't know what, why you think you're here today. Maybe your first time or your 220 time. But God wants you to understand that he came for a spiritual impartation. to impart spiritual things. Is there anybody that wants to be a part of some spiritual things? Now watch this. I was watching this movie and it's interesting that it talked about the arrow. And I know it's in Psalms 127, I think around verse 4, it talks about a child and being a man. But this is how God gave it to me. This is what I wrote down from because I thought it was so interesting. Children are living messages that we send forward to a time that we will not see. Amen. Children, I want y'all to get this. Children are living messages that we send forth to a time that we will not see. A parent that are raising a child People years from now will be able to tell what you did with that child by how that child lived. Yeah. By the messages that you poured into that child, they'll be able to tell a lot about the parent they were connected to. Amen? Amen. 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 When a child is like a sponge, that's why the Bible says it's life and death in the tongue. When you release words, you are pouring into that child and you are helping that child become what they're going to be in the future as a person. Some of us in this room are battling with things our parents poured into us. Can we get an amen? Amen. Some of us are battling with things men and women pour into us. Amen. That's why I'm so glad that I ran into Romans where he says that your mind don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. God says, I have to put you in a situation. Church is merely a classroom. I know we don't turn it into an entertainment stage. I know we don't turn it into no way is it. God never meant for it to be. You know how I know God never meant church to be an entertainment, a place for entertainment? Because he had his disciples call him rabbi. Amen. The word rabbi means teacher. You find teachers in an atmosphere of teaching. If they call him rabbi, then the mount up on the, the sermon on the mount was the university. Amen. When Paul was in prison, the prison was the university. Amen. 
That's why Paul says, oh, I'll be bound. The, the arrows that I'm shooting for are still making free. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than you. The children. That's why we have to watch who pours into us. You have to watch who you let pour into your mind. Because you can find yourself being a confused person. Being tossed to and from by the cutting and craftiness of men. Who lie to deceive. How do you tell one boy, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go into that in a minute. Because we have to understand that there are people who lie. But they, and they lie not even knowing that they're lying. Amen? Amen? But the messenger, it is funny that people want to see the power, but they don't want to hear the message. And Satan is not trying to ch change, they look at the power, he wants you to change the message. He knew if Jesus had turned that stone into bread when he commanded it, the message had been changed. It became a message. Watch what if Jesus turned the stone into bread, it no longer became a message where we were led by the spirit. It became a message that you are led by what you need. If Jesus would have turned that stone into bread, then the service would have been about, like some sermons of the day, about you going to God, about whatever you need, and you doing everything you want, and then ask God to sign off on it. But see, that wasn't the message. Jesus said, that's not my message. Jesus said, my message is, men shall not live by bread alone, but in the word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I need to hear from God. Amen. Then he backs it up later and said, those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. So those who are led by the Spirit, they are the children of God. Amen? Amen. And those who are led by the Spirit will say what the Spirit says. Yes, I might be hungry, but if God told me not to do it, I'm not doing it. Ah, uh, let, me, let me help you out. Let me, bring, let me bring it today. You might be thirsty. You know, ladies, you're thirsty. Me and you're thirsty. See, your generation, you got a new word. For, you got a new meaning for thirst. Thirsty means you want to fulfill the craving of your desires of your flesh. But see, you need to say what Jesus said. Though I be thirsty, they don't always say, I, I desire somebody. Come on, hold on, I desire someone. But I will not quench my thirst. Yeah. Unless the Lord speaks on it. Let me tell you, there will be many men who will say things to you. Medically, mentally, this and that. But I will not yield to what men are, are medically or mentally say. I'm going to find out what God has to say. And I'm going to fight with what God has to say. Amen? No, no matter how crazy that process may look. Can I get an amen? amen. Now I want y'all to So, children are living messages that we send forward to a time that we will not see. Somebody ought to see the God in you through what you sent forward. Amen. I got one person. Amen. Maybe pray for me. because <laughs> Somebody, remember how I started out? Walk, it's time for this time to walk like you are anointed. That's the, that's the title God gave you. It's time for you. So for me to know that you are anointed, I ought to be able to see people in the future should know how anointed your grandma was. Amen. People should see. People ought to be able to tell. Your children will tell 
Et qui vous annonce Ah oui, on I'm not talking, see, y'all gotta get this. I'm not talking about just your babies. Because when they came to Jesus and said, Jesus, your mother and your sisters and your brothers are outside, he said, My mother and my sisters and my brothers are those who do the will of God. Jesus, Jesus said, Don't try to tie me down to no, no flesh. Okay, the black, white, red, yellow. Do you have the spirit of God? Because if you have the spirit, you're going to bear some fruit. Amen? He said, those. He said, they should be able to tell if you are in the presence of somebody. How many know that? The devil know how to shake. The devil know how to do signs and wonders. He know how to do the funny things. The devil even know how to expound on the word. He just don't know how to live it. Man, you know, I done sat down, I've done street ministry. I've done street ministry and ran into people who talk about, oh my God, I done, done street ministry and they ran into some all, all kinds of stuff out there on the streets. And they began to expound on the word and then they start. I don't mean, then I miss them like then. They yeah, say something crazy. Like, brother, you know, because you're black, you're a black man. I'm like, what they got to do with Jesus? What they got to do with God? See, because I know the word, you can't build me up on my flesh. You can't, you can't build me on something that's going to go back to dust. You got to do better than that. Remember now, remember now, my anointing comes from my power. So, you don't, even, you, don't, you don't know what you're going to be as being white. Why? Because your power source is living. Because white people can't stop cancer. White people can't stop tuberculosis. They, 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 they have their power is in them. So you want to be connected to the one who has, um, you want to understand who you're connected to that has the power to no matter what they say, say, well, I say it right. I said, you shall not live, you shall not die, you shall live, you shall fulfill that which I have seen. Amen. Amen. Or I'm saying, come on, come on, you come home with me. But you understand the joy of what that is. Amen. Amen. Or y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Man, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm God trying to minister to you. Listen. He says, so a true child of God that has sat under the rabbi's teaching, what is his job? If he's anointed, it's easy. It's in Galatians 4 19 says, My children, of whom I travail again until that Christ shall have been formed in you. Any man or woman of God who God has anointed, their desire is to see Christ be formed in you. Why Christ? Because the scripture says in Romans 8 9, I foreknew you predestined you to be conformed into the image of my son. How many of you know we needed to see a son to know how to be a son? Come on somebody, remember I told you he's the seed from heaven. The seed from heaven is not an earthly I gotta grab this. The, what, you are, what you are entering into is not an earthly thing. We were made of the earth but what you're entering into is the kingdom. When Jesus steps inside of you, he says, your spirit bear witness with his spirit and it cries out, Abba. Somebody say, Father. Father. That's why when he told his disciples, when you pray, pray in this manner, our Father. He said, pray like you know you're anointed. Pray like you know who you belong to. Pray like you have some authority. Pray like you know that you have overcome the enemy. Pray like you know you have overcome flesh. Pray like you know you can endure temptation. Pray like you know you can stand against a storm. Pray like you know that it's God before you who can be against you. Pray like you know that He who has given you peace and that is all understanding. Pray like you know that nothing can separate you from the love of God. He said, Pray, Alpha. Pray. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in earth. Watch this. He didn't say in earth as it is in earth. Ooh, you get the revelation. He says in earth as it is in heaven. Ain't no flesh in heaven. You better read your Bible. The Bible tells us that Jesus had to be transferred. He said, we know not what we shall become, but we shall be as he is. Because flesh is corrupt. Read your Bible. The Bible says that Jesus stepped into the flesh that which is corruptible. If flesh is corruptible, it can't go where it is eternal. But you start walking in you, you, you start walking in heaven. And then when he returns on the twinkling of an eye, you shall be changed from corruptible to incorruptible. That's why your flesh, yeah. listen, the anger, the big like, your anger, your bitterness, your lust, whatever in your flesh gonna be. Amen. Amen. We know not yet what we're going to become. But I'm excited in anticipation. Because whatever we're going to become, there'll be no more sickness. There'll be no more pain. There'll be no more brokenness. Whatever. I even saw Jesus in the world. The Bible said he walked through the wall. I don't know about you, but I might try it. You know, just to try some stuff, you know what I'm saying? Jesus, you did God wrong. Okay. 
You have no righteous role to stand on. So, watch this. I'm, 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 so, the anointing one, job is to what? Uh, to form, the, to see the anointing form in someone else. Y'all with me? Not in one person. We no longer in that day just Elijah. God, he wants an army. He wants an army of family. In that army, there's white men, black men, Hispanic men. In that army, and you won't be able to tell by the outside. You know, I found out something that you can look good on the outside and have something inside you killing you. You can, you can look good on the outside. I seen, I, I, I'm married, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm married, got a train. You can look so good on the outside and have something. People got things on the inside of them. They're like, can just, just, just their heart bitter and angry. Yeah. But they know how to be in church and say, how do They can be behind the pulpit and they, they, they look good on the outside. And yeah, they're using God's pulpit as a means to exalt their anger and their bitterness. Yet they want forgiveness, but will not give it to anyone else. I'm amazed how God has exposed the preachers and people in America when he allowed Donald Trump to be president. I really am. I'm amazed that how many preachers of black preachers if they don't repent going to hell. Because God do certain things to expose the heart of a nation. He does. And when you get out there and you begin, what's this? And when God do these things, he wants to see Will you step out of the word because you don't like the way it goes or how it appeals to you? People who step out of the word are usually a God to themselves in that area. Amen? But well, we can say walk, say walk like you anointed. So we got to see what it looks like. I'm almost with you for a moment. Let's turn your Bibles to 1 John, the fourth chapter. Because Pastor Chris and the elders and, and the ministers and people, your job is that, that Christ be formed in people to take the message of Jesus Christ. And the evidence that you're walking in your anointing is that message later on is revealing that, it would, that it would, you are giving it to someone. Amen. But then, I said, there's a battle in there. To Christ, what's the weapon? Okay, what's one of the first weapons that, that, that Satan must do for if, if, if our job is to, if the true job is the message and to see Christ form in people, then how, what would be the, one of the first things Satan do? Read the first verse in chapter 4. First John, chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Look at somebody say, stop believing everything that comes to you. The Bible says, believe not every spirit. Amen. Well, watch this. <laughs> the spirit, go ahead, keep reading, watch this, go ahead. But try the spirit. Somebody say, try. try. That word try means to test. If church is a school and Jesus Christ is rabbi, wouldn't it be wise for him to tell you, test the knowledge that you receive? Amen. Understand where that knowledge is taking you. One of the greatest ways to test the knowledge is to find out the reward at the end. When people come to you with the word, where the knowledge is taking you to the end. You might begin to find out if it's worth even following. Amen. Go ahead. But try the spirit, whether they are of God. Try and say they are who? Of God. I, I need you to hear try and say was who? Because no one comes to the Son unless what? Why do you need to know the Spirit of God? 
Because God will leave it to no one but to his If, watch this, you cannot pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven, and then have someone preaching to you from a seed that does not lead you to a heavenly kingdom. Make sense? Make sense? Yo, you can't, you can't lead me to no earth. I love you, but I promise you all this. Jerusalem, though it's the city of God, there's a new Jerusalem. Yeah. 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 Yes, it is. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Where God will be the light of the city. Yeah. Yeah. He has fulfilled that promise. And he is not finished with Jerusalem, but he has, but watch this. But last time I checked, and anybody that should tell me out, Joshua led them into Jerusalem. Amen. Can, I, can I get an amen? amen. And, and when they lost Jerusalem, it's because they violated Deuteronomy 8, 7 to 8. Yes. Anytime you see Israel scattered, it's because they were not in line with what God said in Deuteronomy 8. So people will go around talking about their people said they're Israelite. If you scattered, you ain't in Jerusalem, you might be in trouble. You in trouble. Because if you read the Bible, the only reason you're not in Jerusalem, because God said the only reason, the only time you see an Israelite scattered is when they were disobedient to God. Read your Bible. And watch this. Jerusalem, somebody got to get this good. Jerusalem was scattered. But well, somebody said 1946. Was it 1946? 1946, 47. What was it? 48. They thought it was going to be like this huge war, right? They thought they were not going to, what was it, six days? <coughs> six days. <coughs> they took back Jerusalem because God not finished with it. Amen? Amen. Y'all understand? But you better read something. Understand this. He's not finished with them, but God has already, God has already established something new. Yeah. Read Ephesians 4. Where he made, there's no longer a Jew or a Gentile. He made one new man. Guess what they call? Guess what they call? Read your power, I feel it in my spirit. They're not called Israelites. They're not called Hebrews. They are called sons. Hallelujah. Read your Bible. Wrong. John, the first, John 1, not John, 1 John. He came among his own, but they received him not. But for those who receive women, tell me something, ladies, you know what I'm talking about. For you to get pregnant, you have to receive. So let me talk about it. I don't know how it happened. You know, girl, I don't know. It just it happened. No, you had to receive. Come on, church. You had to receive. And the evidence of you receiving something is your transformation. Who got for winning? 
limited power and false identity. Being tossed to and from by the cutting practice of men. Y'all understand what God is saying? He said, when you sat down with me, you received the seed. Amen. You and your sister and everything. And God said, you know what God was talking about? God, you know, we we be like this. When you when you meet somebody, we be like, I want him to be cute. I want him to be, be fine. I want her to be, I want her to be fool. And so then you know you like you gotta get together like that, you know. But God says, I came to you when you was a you was a total mess. I saw potential in you to bring life when everybody else saw death. in you to bring life when everybody else saw has been used, thought, shown, life, cheated. But I saw you with the potential to bring life. To give life. Amen. He says, so he says, did anybody find it interesting that in this first thing, then he says, when he says walk in the anointing, and we understand that the Spirit of God is a son, that the first thing he talks about in four, he says, false prophets. Amen. He says, try the spirit. He says, try the seed, ladies. Men, we all body, say body. body. He said, watch the seed. Because the seed gonna grow something. Amen. Anybody had the wrong seed at one time? Amen. And it grew aggravation and pain, confusion. God's seed don't grow confusion. Why? God knows who he is. He knows he, he know he's God. He knows he's creator. He, know, he knew it from the beginning of time. When we sin, he said, I have to introduce it to him. Y'all want to see how God did it? He showed me one time. I was like, I was, you know, I was like, one night I was working, and he said, let me show you how I introduced myself. He said, they, they say in the scriptures that I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Everybody say, the God. The God. Of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. And then, when in the middle, he said, then they say, with Moses and Miriam, with Moses, Miriam, and uh, Aaron, they say that I am. Amen. Then he said, with Jesus and the, the apostles, they say, Father. He said, now put it together. God, I am. Father. He said, through the Bible, I just been introducing myself right back to you. He said, from the beginning, all I did was introduce myself like God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In fact, thank you, Moses, deliverer. Jesus, connection. Amen. God, I am Father. When your spirit hears the word of God from the teaching of God, it, that, that, that word begins to bring you to a place of not black, not white, not male, not female. It brings you to a place of, I'm his. I'm his. I was a sinner, but saved by grace. Kept by mercy. Reconnected by the spirit. Let's go, come on, come on, because we got to get this. But try the Spirit, whether they are of God. Somebody say, try the Spirit. Try the Spirit. Go ahead. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. God said, there's a lot of stuff. What is a false prophet? He didn't say, y'all ever notice he didn't say many false teachers. He didn't say many false preachers. He didn't say many false apostles. He said, why did he say prophets? Because prophets are the ones who are supposed to speak from the heart of God. There are many false prophets who are saying they're speaking from the heart of God. But see, you can't, if you're speaking from the heart of God, then you're going to be speaking through the Holy Ghost. Amen. Which is the spirit of truth that brings all things in remembrance of Jesus Christ, who is the seed of God. Amen? Amen. 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 Go ahead. Verse 2. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Okay, now we got no Spirit. Go ahead. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh 
is of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ came in the flesh is of God. Some of you think that's really simple. Every spirit, watch this is what he's saying. Every spirit that confess, that's a small s, your spirit. Every spirit that confessed that Jesus came, that he, that he did what? In the flesh. In flesh. Every spirit that believed that it was God in that flesh. Amen. See, spirits who believe there was the flesh in God got a problem. But every spirit that believed there was God in their flesh understands that the power was never in the flesh. It was in the spirit in the flesh. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. The power is in, inside of you. That's why we say greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. It's the spirit connecting with your spirit. You, I remember some of you know you are spiritual. You in a fleshly body, but you're spiritual. Amen. Amen? Okay. Go ahead. Let's keep reading. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus. What, let me tell you something. How many of you know this? When you try to attack, when you try to tie Jesus to flesh, then you're not in the spirit. Because if you believe, how do you know this? That a child is connected to their father. Amen. Oh, I know. Ladies, don't look at me like I'm crazy. Amen. No. A child, I know, I know a lot of men have not done what we have not did what we're supposed to do. And there are a lot of women raising children by themselves. And men have not been in the position they were supposed to be in, which causes now women not to be in the position they're supposed to be in. But if everything is done in order, when a woman gets pregnant and she has a child, her child takes her husband's last name. He takes on her husband's lineage. Somebody don't get it. So he takes on her husband's So since Jesus came from God, then you can't connect him to flesh. Though he be in flesh. He takes on his father's lineage. Mary didn't have, Mary, the angel of David came to spoke to Mary. Mary was impregnated by the spirit. Mary was not impregnated by a man. If you don't, if, first of all, if you don't believe that, you definitely don't know the gospel. Let me just know, y'all think, y'all think there are many people yes, who don't believe that. Yes, yes. Matter of fact, there are religions who don't believe that. They don't believe that God, the same God who formed man from the dust, Jesus. blew into his nostrils to make him in his soul, can step inside of Mary and put a baby in there. Put himself in her flesh. All he did was step inside her flesh and cover himself up. He let her release an egg. I'm stepping into it. Now perfect. So that means God's connection is not to the Jesus Christ's connection is not to the flesh. It's to the spirit. Can you see my word? I'm gonna back everything up to the scripture. In John 4, the Bible says God is no. The Bible says God is spirit. In John 4. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit. So if God is spirit and 23, 23 chromosomes belong to Mary and 23 chromosomes belong to God, that's why in the Bible they call him son of God and son of man. He was son of man because he was in the flesh of man, came in flesh. He was son of God because he was spirit. That's why he told Mary and Joseph when they came looking for him, did you not know I must be about my father's business? He's talking to Mary and Joseph and says, they found him in the sanctuary. He said, did you not, did you not know I must be? What was he doing? Drinking the father's milk, the word. That's why those who are born again 
In God, First Peter says, as a baby desiring the sincere milk of the word of God, that they may grow. Your growth comes from you desiring the word of God. But there are many false prophets that will begin to take you off the word of God. And begin to feed you some Kool-Aid. Amen. And then some people say, well, I tried church. No, you tried religion. Because if you ever tasted and see that the Lord was good, you will know the difference between what's good and what's not. I'm going to get that way. He read. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. Is this spirit? Anti who? Christ. Y'all ever notice why I say Antichrist? Why you say anti -Jesus? Christ is the anointed one. He said, this spirit, the spirit of the anti of anointing, is against the anointing. Christ means anointed one. If it's Antichrist, it means it's anti against the anointed one. It's against you and I walking in our anointing. anointing. This spirit does not want you and does not want you or you and I to walk in your anointing. But God said it's time to walk like you anointed. This spirit of the Antichrist is a spirit that will make everybody else seem like they're insignificant. And it's the only thing that's significant. Because it's anti-Christ. And watch this. If it's anti-Christ, then it's anti-deliverance. It's a spirit that's anti-deliverance. It's a spirit that's anti-Christ. It is a spirit that's anti-power. Y'all with me? It doesn't believe, watch this, it doesn't believe that God has the power to step inside of flesh. And if you don't believe that God has the power to step inside of flesh, then you're not going to believe that God has the power to step inside of you. And if you don't believe that God has the power to step inside of you, then you don't have the power to change you. Keep on going. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it shall come, and even now already is it in the world. It's already here. It's already here. 2019, it's been here. Oh, it's been here. It's been here. That's why you gotta try the spirit. Because you gotta see, is it, is it Antichrist? Is it anti what is it? Watch it. If it's Antichrist, watch this. It doesn't want you to walk in your anointing. It doesn't want you to walk like your anointing. It doesn't want to see Christ really formed in you. It's, it's going to try to form things. It's going to watch. Pastors and men and women of God who are anti-Christ, they are great motivated speakers. Amen. Amen. They, 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 they think preaching is about motivating you to accomplish your dreams and desires. They think it's about you Motivating you. They think church is about motivating you to step into your dreams and desires instead of church being about imparting to you the message of Jesus Christ. So you going around trying to fulfill all your dreams and desires, and yet, guess what? Nobody, you left no errors. In other words, children are living messages that we send forward to act up to at time that will not see. That we, in other words, they don't see Christ from your children, but they see your education. They see the things that you thought was important. They see being a great athlete, but they don't see. So they say your daddy was a great athlete, but they see no residue or nothing of Christ being there. They don't see the message of God. What they see is the uses of God. Because people like that will talk about how they use God to get there, but then they will glorify, they will glorify their position.
position and tell their children, this is what you need to do to get here. As if it wasn't Christ that got them there. As if it was their gifts or talents. And they are diligent about teaching those things, but yet they are not diligent about the impartation of the Spirit of God. So you see, in America, a continuous rotation of people trying to obtain success, obtain financial wealth, obtain businesses, obtain anything that glorifies their flesh, but you no longer see the message. You see gospel singers who will talk about obtaining wealth, obtaining houses, being able to obtain the wealth, but you no longer see the message. And their songs no longer depict the message. And that's why when they speak out of their heart, they say, I no longer want to be associated with a gospel, with a gospel. Why? Because gospel means good news. And I know it wasn't good news that got me here. It was my gift and my talents. I said, don't be deceived. They will preach to you their success instead of God's message. We got filmmakers. When you hear them talk, they talk about their success and then tap God at the end of it. As if there was anything in him that was good. See, when God is first, some people who consider, oh my God, some people who got to the point of what they believe that is success would have denounced it. Some people would have denounced the process of which they obtained success because why? Because the seed that they had received, the anointing on their life would have destroyed the thing or exposed the thing on the process in other words, I'm not taking off my clothes. I'm not going to sing that song. I'm not going to take that script. I'm not going to why? Because I'm anointed. And the anointing of my life is a holy anointing. The anointing of my life is a righteous anointing. The anointing of my life is a pure anointing. And no more I am talented, but I have to refuse that why? Because my anointing, ah,
Verse 4. Ye are of God. What's that mean? Ye are of God. Somebody better say it like you know it. Say it again. Ye are of God. Say it again. Ye are of God. Travail again until that Christ shall have been born in you. Ah, uh, my children are living messages that we sent forward to a time that we will not see. You are the children God is sending forward to a time I might not see, my wife might not see, a Baba might not see. And some of you, yeah, but you're going to be sent forward to a time to continue a message. I don't know. We talk, we don't talk about Paul, we talk about the message Paul delivered. We ain't talking about people talking about the message Peter delivered. Amen. The message. Amen. Keep going. And have overcome them. Come on, somebody. Have what? Have overcome them. Listen to what he's saying. You gotta read, you gotta understand the content. You gotta understand the whole fullness of the scripture. He's talking about the false prophets. He said, but ye, my children, you have overcome the one. See, because you walk, why? Why are you overcoming? Because it's time to walk like you what? See, when you walk like you are anointed, you can't be deceived by the makers. He said, you have overcome them, my children. children. He said, you have overcome. You ain't a Pentecostal or you went to, or you had to go to Pentecostal experience though. But you're over, you watch this. Your ability to overcome falsehood came from you understanding what the Spirit gave you your identity. See, identity births nature. Your nature reflects who you connect it to. We did, we did a couple of weeks, we did a couple of months ago. I had them play the sound of a lion. Everybody looked around. Yes. They knew it was a lion, though they didn't see it. Why? His nature told his identity. Amen. So when I look at you, does your nature tell me who you connected to? Your identity? <laughs> do I say daughter or son? Yeah. Or do I say religion? Because yeah. religious people only if they, they good, only when they're around religious people. Because yeah. of the show. The Bible says it's like this. It's a form and a fashion of God and it's denying the power there. Oh, you got religious people who want to implement all these rules and they want to go to the law. They want to go to the law and implement the law as if the law brought you salvation. I promise you, you've been deceived. The law didn't bring you salvation. And there's nothing in the law that's going to give you eternal life. Shall we throw away the law? No. 
For in Christ the lost people feel. Amen? But watch this. That's why they call it grace. Even why I'm being developed and going through the process of maturing. For he says, we're being taken from glory to glory to glory. I'm locked in because of the gift. Not because of how good I am. If a man was saved by his works, he would boast in himself. His credibility will come from how good he thinks he is. But there is none good but God. So that does that mean we're not being transformed to be good? No, we are. But that's not where your salvation came from. Your salvation came from the one who paid your debt. Because no matter how good, what's this? No matter how good we may have thought we were, we were not spotless. So God needed something spotless to pay the price. So that's why he says, now when the one who paid the price, he said, you are dead. Well, watch what he said. He said, you are dead. But you're to owe no man anything but He says, because in love fulfills all the law. He says, so I want you to stop trying to look and try to try to look to trying to fulfill the law by if I do this, do this, do this. I want you to get the revelation of my love. Because watch this. I love my wife, but through the Spirit of God, in me, see, I, when I was in the world, I would have never had the power to be faithful to my wife. Though I would have said I loved her, I wouldn't have had the power to be faithful. Why? I had nothing, no conscience inside of me other than the conscience of my own will. My own will served my own purpose. But when I accepted Christ, and I said, no longer my will, but thy will be done. Now, through, through, through God's love, 20, going on 23 years, I've been faithful. Now, now I've been faithful. I've been, I've been real. I've been faithful physical. I've been faithful physical. There are times, like you know, in my mind, mentally, because you said if you look on a woman and you have lust, you have committed adultery. There are times in my mind, I found my mind wondering. And I had to write my bell, hold up, I don't that stuff. Because if I believe that's true, I, I, I got to believe the whole world's true. So I'll say physically, I've never had sex with another woman. In my mind, I had to repent. Why? Because you can look somebody and say, oh, man. But if you believe the word of God, then you do have to repent. You have to repent. Then I tell you, I know I had to tell my wife about it, I ain't been faithful. I know she's for a minute, she's like, she probably, I'm glad she had to tell her she worried about the kitchen. Um, Make sure there weren't no weapons in the bed bedroom. And then I put the other side of the bed so I had some distance. And I was on my knees so I was in humble state. <laughs> so she can swim. Baby. Y'all think I'm joking. She, she, she had to come to the bed. I ain't been thankful. She's like, huh? And I said, because in my mind, I had thoughts going through my mind. I had lustful thoughts and these things going through my mind. I'm going to tell my wife so I can be accountable. Amen. Did I tell you, did I tell you that? Because why? If I believe the word of God, if I tell on that, see, if I tell on that, me getting green, you're going to be a green. I'm not getting there with no woman. Because what? I want my conscience to be so still, I want that even the thought of it is wrong. See, I'm going to confess about the thought. And see, some of y'all need to be like my wife. Uh, cause some of your husbands can't tell you because you're gonna kill them just because they told you that. Like if you want to start talking about, oh, you ain't no good, this and that. He can't even tell you the truth because the bottom line is you don't realize he's battling, he's in a battle, and yet he needs to be able to talk to you about the battle, but you're so insecure if he tell you that you're gonna start thinking he wanna sleep with somebody, but he's trying to tell you that he's coming at you. And you crazy enough to believe that he's coming at him. So him as a wise man finds his brothers to go talk to. And then you want to, baby, you talk to me. Husband, you want your wife according to knowledge. And then you stay off the couch. I'm not being, I'm being honest. Because the bottom line is, if he can't tell you the enemy is coming at him, and you can't, and you can't your, job is, your job is to pray for him, not to attack him. Why would you tell them? The ones who cheat don't tell you. 
girl, I ain't never thought about another woman. You, you are, you are all, all that I need. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yes, you are all that I need. But my Bible says that the enemy is shooting darts all the time. And I need to let you know when he's shooting some darts. So you can help me give up the shield. But well, I don't want you to think about nobody but me. Then help me out. And, and watch this. And the ladies sit here smiling like their minds go wrong. Yeah. Are you walking in the office? You like it. You gave a, you gave a little smile too long. You lean a little bit too long. And if you went to lunch, how come you couldn't tell your husband about it? If the, if the lunch is Hey, I'm having lunch with JoJo. <laughs> Ain't no secret lunches. Yeah. Me and JoJo here at lunch. Now, this is the problem. Who is JoJo? My ex. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> You ain't got no business going to lunch with your ex. Amen. Unless you're hooking it, unless you're invited to hooking it. The Bible says, let me just say something, let me tell you something. The Bible says, don't take fire into your bosom. Amen. I don't know, I, I, I don't know what was. Somebody must be here tripping. <laughs> Come on, stop playing. Let your husband let your wife be able to talk to you. You gotta have them conversations. I know I'm saved. I know I'm sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. I know I walk in my anointing. And I know the enemy always throwing darts. I remember one time I called a prophet. The prophet said, let me tell you something. I remember years, this was years ago. Over 15 years, he said, let me tell you something. The thought ain't yours unless you receive it. Amen. Why do you hear that? Wow. Sometimes you think, well, I'm thinking of something that you ain't thinking of. He's just throwing darts. He's just throwing darts. And if, let me tell you something. And if you ever had a spirit of lust and perversion, you're going to be extra sensitive to it. You're going to be sensitive to it on the television. You're going to be sensitive. And sometimes you're not going to be able to watch what everybody can watch. Because when your body's sitting there reacting, and you, the movie ain't even started, and your body's like happy. Anybody been here? The movie has not started, and your body's happy about seeing it, because you know it's going to be a new scene in it. You won't even know the movie like, this is going to be something flesh, I can feel it, I can feel it. I'm going to try to wait till it comes and I'm going to fix the channel real quick. I didn't mean it. God be like, stop lying. You knew that scene was coming. You got discernment. And I found out with Netflix, you just can't watch Netflix. Netflix ain't number porn. Now, Netflix ain't number porn. I know y'all want to hear that. Now, 80% of their movies are straight out porn. I promise you, at one point or another, it's going to get to a scene that's going to be totally flesh. Like, it's a good, oh, it's a, such a good movie. Like, like. Some of y'all like, I can, you, got, you know what? Y'all heard people say, oh, I can deal with that. My spirit, my, my, my spirit can handle it. When it became your spirit? I thought your spirit was submissive to his spirit. No, your spirit like it. Your spirit like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. And then you want to come ask somebody to pray to get that spirit of lust off you. How can I get it off you? You keep introducing it to yourself to it. Amen.
Because greater is he. Somebody say it. Come on. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Say this. Is it true? 
Is it lined up with the message of God? Is it building or developing you to form the image of God? Because how many know messages will shape you? What's being shaped in you? Is religion being shaped in you? Is the world being shaped in you? How many know when Jesus came, the Pharisees and the scribes, the religious order at that, si at that time, Israel, guess what? They were not of God any longer. Read your Bible. Jesus told them, your father is the devil. And when you go convert one, you make them two times the son of hell than you are. So watch what happened. They, uh, they, uh, they were going to the church. They were doing all the traditional things. But when the word came, when the seed came, he said, you're not connected to God. He said, God, could you imagine that? They thinking they serve God. And God said, and Jesus said, the word, the seed says, I don't abide in you. My father doesn't abide in you. Your father was a murderer and a liar from the end. That's why you want to murder me. Yeah. See, a lot of times, the way we treat other people, or oh, I'm about this week, we got to finish, y'all. Huh? We got to see how this thing play out. The way we treat other people shows what message you have in you. Amen. See, we think the way you speak in tongues. We think the way you think you can lay hands on somebody. Or we think the way you expound on the word. The devil knows the word. It's your ability to function in the spirit of God. And that is evidence in the way you deal with other people. Yeah. People that hate people don't have the spirit of God. Yeah. People are always slandering and backbiting and murmuring against people. How are you going to hate something God thought was dying for? How are you going to judge something and yet, you had to be delivered from the same thing. Sin. Keep going. Verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another. Say again. Let us love one another. Anybody find this curious? We are of God. We are all God. He that knoweth God hears us. He that is not of God hears not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And then right after he says that introduction to beloved, let us love one another. He says, how do we know the spirit of truth and error? And then he goes straight in to let us love one another. So the Holy Spirit is operating inside of you and the gospel that you've been, the gospel that you've been hearing is true, then you're going to walk like you're anointed and you're going to walk like you're anointed. Walk. Then they ought to see this in your walk. Amen. They ought to see this in your I don't care about how much you want to expound on the word of God. I don't care how much you think you want to sit there and fascinate people with, with, with all the Hebrew language and the, the Greek language and the, and the English language and commonetics and all of that. Can you walk in love? Can you walk you are anointed. Can you love your enemy? Can you pray for those who despitefully use you? Can you bless those who curse you? Can you lay down your life for someone who got you by? Can you tarry with someone who did nothing but slander you as a child? I know a woman. I know a woman that was molested and she had to sit at the dinner table with her molester and yet her mom who knew that her molester was there can you walk in your anointing can you walk like you anointed see we don't got bamboo we think walking like you anointed is your ability to expound fascinate on the word we think your ability to walk in your anointing is your ability to speak in tongues we think your ability but i just found out right here when you have this They only love people 
love. Many of us can't love somebody else because we don't love ourselves. And you let some liar tell you that you're not worth being loved. You let another broken person give you an identity about how you should be loved. You know when you let other broken people give you identity, things get real messy. Look at someone say, let God clean it up. He we we get there. Beloved, uh -huh. let us love one another, mm -hmm. for love is of God. Love is of who? God. Of God. Love is of who? God. God. Love is of who? God. Of God. I ain't never met so many people say they have God and don't have no love in them. There's so many of us that say we ain't got no love in us, so we say we are God. But he just said love is of God. Now some of us got love. Say we got love. But look at somebody that say, it's time for it to grow. It's time for it to grow. You got love, but it's time to grow. Amen. Go ahead. And everyone that loveth is born of God. Say, oh my God. Ooh. He said, everyone that what? That loves is that born of God. So now you know if you're born again. Yes. He said, everybody, everyone that love is what? Born of who? So that means you had to be born again. You had to receive another seed. I came up on my own, but they received me not. But for those who received me, gave me power to make them sons. So they've been born again, born of who? So they call them Abba. See, you were born of God again. Well, somebody should have See, I don't need nothing behind me. I don't need behind me or the side. I don't need uh, son, doctor, son. I don't need bishop, son. I don't need apostle, son. I don't need black, son. I don't need white, son. I don't need PhD, son. I just need to be a son. See, all the power, that's where all the power is. Now, I, don't give me all the add on, I like it. I want my daughters to understand, I want my daughters to understand that they are an arrow. And that they know me and their mom love them, but they are daughters and sons of the kingdom. So where they, where they daddy might not be, or where their mama might not be, guess what? They live like they, they live like they receive the message. Amen? Like the message is dwelling in them. What's that thing greater in you? Say the message. The message. Is it on the back? Say the message. 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 Who else? Who, who else? Um, come here for a minute. Um, come here for a minute. See, a lot of y'all think I have these shirts designed, but God told me these are not shirts, they are message. Now come up here for a minute. See, because once people are witnessing, what are they witnessing? Because I'm walking in what? Because we both have received what? You know what I'm saying? See, you gotta understand me. And y'all think there's four here. And see, but, but how did they get the message? What was the message? One body in Christ. One body in Christ in love. One body in the anointing. Why? What does the anointing do? Destroy the yoke. Where? In your heart. Why? So you can walk in love. So you can walk in love. Because God is looking for some people that they can stop witnessing you. God said, I'm tired of people witnessing you. I want somebody to witness the seed in you. When you see, watch this. <laughs> Every time you see an apple tree, you witness the seed. Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. Every time you pick a fruit from that tree, you witness the original seed. Yes. You are partaker of the original seed. Every time somebody partake of you, they ain't bad. They don't talk. They, watch this. They don't, they don't take a bite out of you no more. They take a bite of the Jesus in you now. They don't hate you. They, they don't hate you. They hate the seed in you. Because you would have cursed them out. Amen. 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 Say, we in school. So we get it. Go ahead and finish it. For he that loveth is born of God 
and knows God. So that means you can't even say you know God unless you know how to walk in your anointing. Love. Go ahead. Verse 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So that means how I know that you're not of God is by your ability to love. And the Bible says there's no greater love than one who would do what? Let me tell you something. When you get the message, when you get the message with love, you will preach this message if you was on your dying duty. No situation or storm coming in your life will hinder the message coming out of your mouth. The apostles were in prison. Being what? They were thought about, they were, they were being they were ready to be crucified upside down. There was no circumstances their life was being confronted that stopped them from releasing a message. When your message can be shut down because of the adversity of life or the pain or the conflict of life, and you will say, well, I can't go, I gotta, I'm worried about that, I gotta leave. Then your message, you got to examine where your message came from. Because there was something about the apostles that understood that the message was more important than them. And watch this. But how, what, what, was, what was it about them that understood the message was more important? They received the promise in the message. They received there was a promise in the message. For watch, how do I know what I'm saying? Because Peter said, Lord, where shall we go? He's talking to the message. He said, Lord, where shall we go? For in you are the words that lead to eternal life. So he got the message. He said, where am I going? For I understand the message that you, what was in the message that you're giving is eternal life. So guess what? Crucify me upside down. Whatever adversity, if I lose my job, whatever attack come at me, your attack is to challenge your love. Your love is to see how far you'll go. You know, you know what I'm saying? He said, have you tried my son? Have you tried my servant or job? He said, he stripped him from everything. He said, that he could attack his body. But if you notice something, Job never stopped preaching. He never stopped declaring. He got, he got, he got balls on his back. But you know what? Some of us, if mama, you got the report, some of us at certain places, you got the report, you done. You done. If you get that report, there are people, when they, man, God, why you have to take my mama? I'm done. God, why I have to lose my job? I'm done. God, why I gotta be stricken with this disease? I'm done. I'm not done because greater is he that is in me than he that's in his world. And then I'll be done when I cross over. I'll be done when I'm finished. I'll be done when I'm finished. That's why, you know, sometimes you're like, man, no, I don't want nobody to feel sorry for me. Don't want nobody to feel, you want anybody to feel sorry for me? No. Because I'm like, mama, he said, why? He said, I'm fully persuaded, convinced that I'm going to run this race till it's over, till it's finished. I'm going to run it till it's finished. So no matter what, if I got to be in the bed, I already remember I was in the bathroom. I said, if I'm in the bed, you know what I got to do? If I'm stricken in the bed, I'm going to put a YouTube page up. Preach while I'm in the bed. Yeah. Turn it on! Yeah. I'm in the bed. Keep going, Put it in Why? Because you know what? See, we think it. Y'all think I'm joking. But I'm trying to tell you, the Bible says life is full of trouble. But see, trouble challenges your position, your position with God. Trouble, trouble will challenge your love. If you look at relationships, if you look in the natural and look at relationships, when they go through trouble, evaluate your love. When they go through something in relationships, it ain't got to be like any husband or wife, it can be girlfriends. Do you notice what's funny? When what I've noticed that when people, and even in the church, when they go through things with other friends and certain people in the church, you think, you think. Oh, I, I'm, I'm done with the church. Then they start writing pages like, you know what? Uh, I've been wounded. You didn't understand. It was your ability to, it, that what you went through was to challenge your ability to love. Yeah. To see if you had the ability to persevere. I tell my mama, I tell my mother, I said, I don't even want to go to battle with somebody I can't go through something with. Yeah. Why? Because you ain't been tested to try. So how do I know if we go through something, you ain't going to out of here. Let's take care of this. Let's lock this out. Because that's the, see, the problem is you gotta know who you, who got the message.
message and who you going to war with. Because what happened in the church, you got too many people who got now, <laughs> they got their own YouTube, they got their own on how to leave church because you won't. Jesus was wounded. And he died for the church. Are you greater than him? Everybody got something negative to say. Well, nobody loved the church. But everybody wanted to be critical. Go ahead. Verse 9. In this was manifested the love of God in us. Like, he gonna, they gonna, he gonna show you. In this was manifested the love of God toward us. Go ahead. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world. He said, let me show you how love looks. I'm gonna send my son. Some of us, I look at some of y'all got kids here. Y'all got kids. How many of y'all are willing to sacrifice your kid for your enemy? I'm gonna get some of your brothers looking like. I said your enemy. Because how many of us in this room know that we were all the enemy of God? Who goes, how many, come on, mamas and daddies, how many of you go back? Your enemies are right here. Barabbas. And your son right here. How many of us say, take my son out, let my enemy go free? that type of love. But see, when you're hearing the gospel, many of you don't like a church when they're hearing that type of gospel because that kind of gospel causes you to have to stretch beyond you. It causes you to re realize that you can't earn your righteousness by trying to keep all these laws. That your righteousness is going to be imputed unto you through the love of God. Now you have to display your righteousness by loving those who don't love you. So now God will send you to a job and you're like, oh, I love this job. And you're going to have the most hateful sister at that job. Jesus. And then you're going to have some so-called Christians at the job. And you're going to always want to hang with the so-called Christians. But the one, but the, the one that's hateful, she's going to be drawn to you. And even though she snapped on you, she's going to be drawn right back to you again. And you thought you were sent there because you had a degree. You thought you were sent there because it was an opportunity. Because you were in church by the oh God, God gave me a job. You testified about the assignment. Not understanding the purpose. You didn't know that you were sent there because you was a door. You didn't know you were sent there because you were a son as an ambassador of the kingdom. You were sent there to let your life so God. Because the one that you hate, the one that's hating you, that's your sister and she don't even know it. God's sending you there to water her. Because she will outrun you when she gets saved. She will be a blaze of fire when she gets saved. Oh, 
And you hear me. But you already released. And you start feeling good, you're like, oh. There are certain places you can touch and you still can. But the alarm is going down. And she's beginning to be free. Walk like you anointed. See, those that are anointed have the power, they have a code to break down the walls. Go ahead and finish it up. That God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Live to who? Live to who? Jesus. So how are we living? Good. Somebody say through the word. Through the word. We live it through what? Because if we're going to live through him, we're living through the word. We're living through the seed. The seed produces what? Fruit. The life I now live, I live in faith in Christ Jesus who gave his life for me. Because without faith it's impossible to please him. But now all I want to do is please my father. Why? Because I encountered his love, his son. You don't know I was a liar, a homemonger, a cheater. Everybody counted me out. I don't know. Brother, brother, I've been to prison. I don't know. Everybody said, you know me? God says, no, that's mine. Son, written up on his chest. See, they talking about, see, they talking about S for something, Superman. But the son got S for son. They got son. When they walk in the room, son. And guess what? They ain't worried about crypto, my crypto might can stop Superman. But nothing can stop him. For the Bible says, I have given you power over all the works of the enemy. And nothing shall hurt you. Tell me what can stop the love. Tell me what can stop love. My Bible says, love bears all, believes all, hopes all in other. Love is the only thing that can cannot show that will not fail. The problem with some of us is, you got to get to that place where say, God, love, Lord, teach me what love looks like. God, I've been deceived. I have never really been trying to love. That's the problem with religious people. They don't they think that we think we know something. But when you get to the place where you say, God, you know what? I don't really know what love looks like. I want to know what God's love looked like so I can walk in it. I want to walk in it. I think walking in love is just being nice. The devil is nice at times. He's just nice for, he be nice for a reason. Come on, go ahead. Are we learning something tonight? Yeah. Say walk in love. Walk, love. walk like you anointed. Like go ahead. Verse 10. Herein is love. We all love. You say, say it again. Herein is love. See, he's not going to leave it up for us to figure out what love is. Yeah. Amen? And I know some of y'all say, man, the sermons be like, no, let me tell y'all something. I don't preach. I'm a messenger. I'm a son that has been given a message. I don't preach to stir you up. But we're going to get stirred up. See, when you preach this much stuff, you know what you do? After you get them stirred up, you go in, and then you end the service because you was that was your job. No, you get stirred up all day. I'm gonna finish this sermon. Why? I'm gonna finish this message. Why? Because you need to understand what God's trying to teach you. You know what I'm saying? I don't mind. Hey, but the bottom line: lock in, lock in your seat, keep your pen writing, and keep hearing what God has to say. Why? Because you're God's written epistles. Amen. I need you when I'm way gone. He said they don't need that. You got many people, but you don't have many fathers, right? So we call, we are God's spirit. We, we have we have been anointed to be your spiritual fathers. And as spiritual fathers, my job is to make sure that arrow is shot in people. I'm not going to go around. Somebody said, I can have to see Christ. Because I'm not trying to get to see me. No. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Not me. Because I'm not preaching myself. I'm preaching not myself. I'm preaching Christ Jesus. These are not my words. They're Christ's words. So every time we get up and we start shouting, I'm shouting at God. I'm shocked because I'm like, God, that was good. Thank you for that word, God. Go ahead. Hearing is love. Hearing is love. 
Not that we love God. So let me tell you something. That's why we need to get to the place where we say, God, I don't know how to love. Because you didn't know how to love. The Bible said, not because you love. There's not a person in this room that loved God first. And I'm amazed at how many unsaved people tell me, I love God. You love God? What's wrong with you? I love God. You know what I love? What's wrong with you? Yeah. Amen. They're like, they didn't want to say to the world, they're like, I love God. You don't love God? You don't even know God. Stop playing. Shut up. No, you just need to stop playing. You lying. You don't even know. If you love him, you wouldn't be making that CD you just cut out. If you love him, you would never take that movie part. You don't hurt. See, this is, I know we in that world. It's a thin line between love and hate. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. There's no thin line between Satan and God. Amen. God is the king, all ruler. Satan ain't but a fallen angel. Amen? Amen? Many of our relationships are messed up because we don't know how to love. We have, let me tell you something. The scripture says this in the last days, people are going to become lovers of pleasure. There are people that are, they are deceived because they think pleasure. They have sold God. They have sold God and love for pleasure. And you can, and they, let me tell you something, and they have been turned over to a spirit of delusion because you can't tell them that ain't love. How I know? To talk to him. Girl, that ain't love. Oh, I love him. No, you are a liar. That's not love. No, you, you don't. That's rude. No, you lying. That's not love. God will never sleep with. God will never talk. I see you now through the seed. Through the message. That's not the. We're going to start by yourself saying, people, that's not the message of God. You're going to start hearing yourself. I promise you, you're going to start listening on radio. You're going to start listening on radio. You're going to start watching. You're going to start listening on Facebook. You're like, that is not the message of God. That's, you can discern. That's, that's hatred under all that. What they say in God is hatred under there. That's not the message of God. Under all that. You ever, you ever, you ever discerned it? That is not the message. What is under there? Pride and self promotion. You can just start discerning it. It's about. How do you know? How do I know? Because I discern some things in my own self. I'm like, hmm. Because hmm. when the Spirit of God, hey, he'll show you you first. Girl, you know that hug was fake. You know that hug was fake. You know you was trying to show out up there singing. You know you weren't even thinking about me when you were up there singing. You was, you, that one knee thing, that all. And that little three times. You got hooked up into the people. That's why I was like, man, y'all y'all think I'm joking, but y'all be like they hey, this man was watching this, this situation. He got it requires in competition. Y'all know that ain't God. Y'all oh, don't know that? Y'all don't know when y'all have them choirs come together and they're sitting there praising for a trophy, which you know, that's all that is foolishness in the kingdom. Amen. So what you so now you're praising God to win a trophy, then that is your reward. Wow. And God is not your reward. That trophy is your reward. And you're trying to perfect, perfect your voices and all the stuff to win a trophy. I thought the choir was to bring praises to God. Well, it is, but we want to look extra. So, so what? So pleasing God is no longer enough? Come on. Say, give us that. Go ahead. So herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Yeah. That's what love looks like. So somebody willing to willing to sacrifice for you, they don't love them. Somebody willing to take you to bed the first time they meet you, they don't love them. Somebody who's willing to serve nobody but themselves, don't get mad. It's just that they don't understand love yet. And they, they, they and until they understand love, they're still they'll continue to use themselves, they'll continue to break themselves because they, they're looking for and know what people always say, how many of y'all say this? I was looking for love in all the wrong places. It's kind of a true saying statement. But see, but the, but let me tell you what makes the statement true 
but true to a point that really messes you up. You didn't even know what you were looking for. You never encountered it. You haven't seen it. So it's kind of like you're looking, you're looking for something you had never seen. So that means until you begin to turn to God, you will always lose because you don't know what you're looking for. I first must understand what I'm looking for to be able to comprehend and understand that I have it. If I have nothing, if there's nothing in my mind to tell me that I, if I can't recognize it, how do I know I have it? So I find myself always looking for something I can... See this, anybody see the devil trick? You find yourself always looking for something you can never obtain because you don't want to look for it. Amen. And as long as it can keep you out of God's face, you stay on a roller coaster ride for your whole life until he takes you to hell. And then you end up never, then you end up never attaining it. Because what is, it's, it's, it's a sad thing to have lived a life and never to have obtained love at all. Amen. Go ahead. But you felt good a lot though. <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also love one another. Amen. Amen. Because I'm receiving it. See, some of us getting that breakthrough tonight because you find out you find out where your issue was. You know, you've been trying to find God in every place else, but you've been trying to find God in every place but love. You've been trying to find God in every place but love itself. You've been trying to find God in knowledge. The Bible said knowledge puffed up. You've been trying to find God in money. You've been trying to find God in success. But God is actually in love. You gotta find, you gotta find out what love is. Go ahead, go ahead. Verse 12. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. So, so, the, re so the reason how I know that you are a child of God, this is going to mess up so much false doctrine. Because anytime doctrine hates any other people, that is not the doctrine of God. If doctrine has any hatred, that's how you know the KKK. Doctrine faith, faith. Any doctrine that teaches hate toward any other people is a false doctrine. Why? Because God is love. Go ahead. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us. Uh -huh. How do we know that he dwells in us? How do you know if you have God in you and he in us? Go ahead. Because he has given us of his spirit. He has given us what? His spirit. And God is the spirit of what? Truth. That brings forth what? Love. That's the message. What message? That he sent his son to die. That's the act of love. That's what love looked like. That's the message. So therefore, it's all good. But that's the message your children should be passing on. Your sons and daughters are to be brought up with If you don't teach them anything else, they need to know the love of God. Yes. And they need to know that, that love of God is played out. No, you can't be a racist. You can't hate white people. You can't hate black people. You can't hate yellow people. You can't hate red people. Why? Because all men came for one man. And to hate one man is to hate all men. Amen? And man was made out of dirt. But God was a quickening spirit. Go ahead. Verse 14. I got to hear this part. Yeah, some, some of us going to get, we get, some of us about to get real happy. Go ahead. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Say message. Message. That we hear and testify. I got so many people that want to expound on the word of God. But when somebody's preaching to you, are they preaching to you this? That the Father sent the Son to be a savior of the world. If y'all noticed. It. So that means anybody in the world can be saved. He didn't say a savior of white people. He didn't say a savior of black people. He said a savior of the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish and have everlasting. That means, how many sinners in the room? Excellent. 
So all of us needed grace, right? Yes. Were all of us in the world? Yes. So we were open to it. Amen. So don't go around telling somebody because of their sin, they can't get they can't get what you got. Because you weren't righteous. How you gonna disqualify somebody? How you gonna how we you know that you got you, you know we have people that have religious who disqualify other people as though they were never sinners themselves? How you gonna disqualify somebody else and you a sinner yourself? Who made you so righteous that you would disqualify other people when the bottom line is you were sinners? That's so crazy. Y'all know that's how crazy that is? You a murderer, but you gonna disqualify somebody else because they are murderers and stole something. Well, they stole, so they can't, they can't get set free. Wait a minute. But you murdered. Are you, let me, let, me, let me ask you a question. Is there anybody in this room that's not saved by grace? Don't be afraid. You can raise your hand. That, that you, that if you believe that you are not saved by grace. Is there anybody in this room that believes that they are not saved by grace? Raise your hand. Don't be, don't be upset. Because because that means, you, you, let, me, let me explain what grace is. Let me put it this way. Is there anybody in this room that believe that their salvation came because they were a good person? Is anybody in this room believe your salvation gets? Because I want to know. Don't, don't talk to me now. Put me later. Tell me how did you get your salvation if you believe you're saved? I want to know how you got your salvation. If it was not from Jesus Christ, how did you get your salvation? Because that means that means you were saved through something that had to be holy, righteous, pure. And that means you had to be saved by something that came straight from God. And I'm, I just want to know. That's curious. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish reading. Verse 15. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. So you have to confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Go ahead. And we have all known and believed the love that God has toward us. We all know and believe that love God has toward us. Go ahead. God is love. God is what? Love. Okay, go ahead. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth okay. in God. I want y'all to grab, please grab this part right here. Grab this part right here. God is love, and he who dwelleth in love dwelleth in what? In God. So he who dwelleth in God dwelleth in love. Keep on reading. Watch what he says. And God in him. And God in him. Go ahead. Verse 17. Uh-huh. Herein is our love made perfect. Herein is all love made perfect. Go ahead. That we may have boldness. Oh, some, here we go. That who? That we. That who? That we. That the children of God may have boldness. Watch this. So there are some people who will, in, in the gospel that's being preached, like people get scared. Why are you scared to read Revelation if you're a daughter? Why are you scared to read Revelation if you're a son? There should be no part of the Bible you're scared to read. Because he who dwelleth in love and dwelleth in God and God dwelleth in may be boldness. Go ahead. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. So God says, there are people that are in a position who can be bold in the day of judgment. Yes. How many of you know that Noah could have been bold in the day of judgment? Yes. How many of you know that Lot was outside? Saying, that Lot can be bold in the day of judgment. Yes. God said, there are those who dwell in love and God. He said, the spirit is inside of you that has brought the message of God's love towards you through the God sending his son. Causes, if you receive that spirit, you know that you are saved because why? Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Okay. The love that has saved you, if God loved you so much that he has sent his son, what is it he would do for you? What is it that God wouldn't do with you if he, if, if he sent his son to die? What is it that God wouldn't do for you? Why are you crying about situations and circumstances? Has God not already prepared a way for you to escape? He has conquered death itself. Go ahead. Yeah. Because as he is, so are we in this world. He said, as he is, so watch, as God is, so are we in this world. Who is he talking to? His sons and daughters. Yes. As God is, so are we in this world. Those who have the spirit of God, he recognized he is in this world. And the world recognized them through the ability of the loving one another. All this backbiting, cursing each other out, and 
cheating in the house, church, church, this, this, this should not be. All this black church, white church, red church should not be. Not where the message of God is. All this hatred for people should not be. Not if we have the spirit of God. I'm not saying it's in the scripture. All this hatred and then going to stamp God's name on it? Let me tell you what God hates. God hates sin. And he sent his son to separate us from the thing that was going to do. You know why God hates sin? Because it's sin that destroys you. It's our disobedience to the truth that destroys us. Everybody in this room, your hurt, your pain, and your brokenness came from a lie. A lie. A lie that you believed and you trusted and found out it was a lie left you hurt, wounded, and broken. And you know what many times? And it came from relationships. Maybe mother, daughter, son. It came from people that you thought should have loved you, but they gave you a lie. And yet we continue to play the lie game to make your flesh feel good instead of allowing God to teach you what love really looks like. Go ahead. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. There is no fear in love. Look at someone say, no fear in love. No fear in love. Go ahead. But perfect love has casted out all fear. Amen. See, when you know that, that see, fear comes when you don't believe that God gonna come through for you. Yeah. But see, I know God gonna come through for me. Yeah. In any and every situation, God gonna come through. He's already made a way of escape in any and every situation. Yeah. Keep reading. Because fear hath torment. Is there anybody in this room who find himself being tormented while you sleep? Find yourself being tormented. You know what happens when you find yourself being tormented? You're not trusting God's love enough whatever situation you're in. You are allowing the enemy to believe that God will come through for you. I promise you, it's about a situation, it's about a circumstance, it's about people. You're not allowing God to, 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 to you can trust God in a situation because about this, so you're becoming fearful about the situation, and now you're tormented about something. And I'm gonna tell you, I know what you mean. Because I, I, I'm going to go through certain things, and the devil been shooting thoughts in my mind. I'm in thought, and he's trying to, and I have to, like, you gotta cast down these thoughts, cast down this, cast down this. And you gotta say to yourself, I know that God loves me. I know no matter what the situation is, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I face, if I lose this, if I lose that, I know it is not because God don't love me. It is unquestionable. It is undoubtable. It is. It is. God is absolutely in love with you. Yes, there are going to be things that's going to happen in life. Yes, there are going to be things that's going to make you. I, I was watching a story. It's a sad thing. The woman, the beautiful woman, man, they found in the canal. The woman they found in the canal. She got two daughters. Yes, her life is taken, and terrible things happen in life. But that is not a reflection of God's love. That's a reflection of man's wickedness. But God's love is always there. God's love, and, when, and guess what? And God's love will comfort her daughters. God's love will, guess what? And when, they, when tragedies happen and situations begin to occur, you got to understand that God's love is faithful. God's love is unchanging. God's love was revealed in him sending his son. Watch this. If he would save you from death itself, what else would he save you from? God's love, he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. God's love is faithful, people. God's love is faithful. Sometimes we're looking to people. People are not always faithful. But, but I want to share something with you. The sons and daughters have to understand that they are called to be faithful. They are called to be, because it's through you I see the message. So if you don't be faithful, then I'm not going to see God. And I need to see God. So no more excuses. That you need to understand that you are faith. God needs us to be faithful. Y'all hear me? He needs us to walk in the message of God. Not be, everybody want everybody to get the note of that. Everybody want to learn the word. Go out and be a preacher. Be a minister. Can God get some people who don't want to live it? In just everyday life. No, Lord, do you have to have a platform? Can you be a messenger of God and just send out? You want a platform, but nobody in your house knows you're saved. Yeah. Nobody in your job knows you're saved, but you want a platform. I want to be an evangelist. Okay, start evangelizing your own house. 
Evangelize your children. Evangelize your neighbor. Amen? Amen. Evangelize. Show somebody some love. Because it's hard to, oh, oh my God. It's hard to show love to the ones who are close to you. Because those are the ones that come at you hard. See, don't people at work, you're like, man, I'm gone. I ain't thinking about them no more. But that sister at home who keep trying you, calling you names, calling you Christian, you're a Holy Ghost, calling you out your name. God said, now walk, now walk. Watch this. What did he say? Now walk like, walk in your anointing. Walk like you're anointed. You know that boss at that job that God told you not to leave? Walk like you're anointed. Isn't it funny that Christians always want to talk about a promotion when they're going through a storm? I mean, a job promotion. I, got, I know you got something else from God. Yeah, I do. You to die right here. I need you to show the love of God right here. See, in this false gospel, it don't take you here. And, and the reason for it takes you to places and make you think you're going to get all these tangible rewards about this. Your reward is to birth Christ. Your reward. Your reward. Do you know what this? Do you know how honorable it is for God to choose you to show himself strong in you? Do you know for God to take you to take you sinners and liars and live through you and let your name be known as being great because he lived through you? Come on, come on, God. Now, I hope all this, and at the end, you're going to get a brand new pink Cadillac. <laughs> Better go get you a job at Avon. Black <laughs> Fit Mary Kay, one of them. Trying to, no, live for God. Come on, we got to stop dressing up to catch something and live to catch something. Amen. I want to be bold in the day of judgment. Keep going. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. See, when you fear, God's still trying, you're still not made perfect in that area. And you can be made perfect in one area and still have to be made perfect in another area in love. Amen. And I know. God told me I'm rising you up, man. He gave me something about to rise you up. I'm like, man, I have no idea. Now I'm, I'm getting a full understanding what he was talking about. Because I was like, oh, I would have rather stayed as a corporal, Lord. <laughs> Cause this, cause this, cause my God, he said, "No, I got you." How many know promotion comes from being able to walk in faith? Yeah. Promotion comes from being able to walk in love. Go ahead, trust him, trust in God. Go ahead. Verse nineteen: We love Him because He first loved us. Everybody in this room needs to underline that. Hallelujah. We love Him because He taught you how to love. Amen. The rabbi taught you how to love. That's how you know if you had the right teacher. Did, it, did he teach you how to love, or did he teach you how to hate people? Okay. That's the difference between truth and error. Go ahead. If a man says, I love God, and he hated his brother. Listen right there. This is what he says. If a man say he loved God, but he hated his brother. And some of y'all say, well, who is my brother? Hmm. Let's, let's look at the scripture. When they came to Jesus and said, Jesus, your mother and your sisters and your brothers outside. Jesus said, my mother and my sister. So brother is not determined based on your, 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 your race. It's not determined on who you were birthed to. Your brother is those who do the will of God. Yeah. So your brother might be anybody. Go ahead. They had to accept the Christ. If a man says, I love God and hated his own brother, he is a liar. The Bible says he's a liar. And this is that's where we at now. People, man, since how many of y'all know since anybody noticed that God, how many of y'all know that God set situations up to expose people's heart? Amen. Has anybody noticed that you've seen since this Donald Trump situation how much hatred is on people's heart? And I'm talking even in the church. Black people, white people, and it's like it's like a disease. And then they want to say, can I help y'all out real quick? Donald Trump didn't create this hatred. It was always there. Amen. God just used them to uncover it. Yes. It ain't new. It's always been there. The hatred in this nation for blacks and whites and, and everybody hating each other. Ain't no, you know what's funny? People be talking about being suppressed and oppressed. Ain't nobody stopping you from going to college you want to go to. You can walk in any store you want to walk in. You can buy anything you want to buy. 
And injustice is in, in every race that they face some injustice. Why? Because they because why? Because the, the, the race that you have, you escalate towards greater than anybody else. But I choose, I choose not to hate. Why? Because I was shown love. That don't mean I that don't mean I overlook injustice. I want justice done to anyone who does wrong. Go ahead. He is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he had never seen? He said, "How you gonna say you love God? You know what? We got too many. We got too many people going back with the old, with the old king. They killing, they, they killing, they killing um, Abel. You know, Cain he killed Abel. And then he said, oh, am, I, am I my brother's keeper? Then slay his brother. Do you know every time you sleep with somebody that's not your husband, you murder? Every time you sleep with him, you are a murderer. When you sleep with somebody that you're not married to, you are cut. Watch the Bible says the wages of the sin is what." If you're not married to him, you're having sex, isn't that sin? Yes. So you are so you got your bed dressed up all night, got flowers all around. When you got you some nice, got, when, when you got you some little, some little nice little gown with all your, with all your goodies showing, then dressed up to made a dinner that you don't cook or bought it, trying to pretend like you cooked it. <laughs> Sitting there talking about, got on, got on music, tonight is the night. <laughs> Putting on love songs. And about, to go, and, and about to be a vampire and about to suck the life out of somebody. All in the name of lust. And once you get your pill, you dismiss them or they dismiss you. And then you go to the next one. Can we be real with me? Because I'm, I'm going to talk about myself too. Because I did it too. But then I had a son. And then we started even out, we started having these babies. And they're growing up, they're growing up without knowing who their fathers are, they're growing up without knowing, and they're growing up and growing. I'm not judging them, but I, I did it myself. I had a child. But that's not right. And now, this what we have to do two things. We play this game when we have our children, or we play this game when we kill them. 1.2 million babies in abortion community. Y'all want to see how wicked this nation has come? We sit there having, we sit there, and I'm gonna say the Democrats. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk on this. People, they sit there, sit, they argue about when is the right time to murder a baby. What kind of barbaric nation is that to sit there and argue women's rights? Y'all, let me help y'all, ladies. Men too. You have the right to keep your legs closed. Until the day you get married. And then we, I'm gonna tell you this is what we do. Men and women, once you give up that right, you now have the right to take care of the responsibility of what's been birthed off of your decision. Now let me tell you something else. Because they're gonna say, Great. He never had the right, he or she, because rape can go both ways. Yes, I know you have to yes it can. There are little boys who are raped black. There are no situations when he was little, when they were little boys who were raped by girls who were 17, 18 with their babies and they raped these little boys who were six or seven years old. They, they raped them and used them for sexual play, pleasure. Yes, that has happened. And in rape, it says if she gets pregnant. Rape is a terrible, terrible situation. But let me say something to you ladies. Let us not do evil for evil. Somebody got to stop the trend of evil. So what? He did. He murdered. He took something. Really, so you gonna take a life for something? That ain't what Jesus did. We did something evil. He died for us. I know. And I listen. I know the kind of love that's gonna take in this situation. And I know we live in a world that ain't even trying to understand that type of love. So abortion will probably keep on going because we live in the world. But you know what my problem is? When you got Christians signing off on that. And on Facebook, arguing the point about rape. It shows you, remember I told you, your message is 
false. Your conversion is false. You could not have the love of God dwelling in you and in you and make the statements you make or justify something that will murder a child in the womb. See, we want to we want like, no, no, there, there is no, there is no, maybe no, it is absolutely never no. That's God's thou shalt not murder. Thou, God is not going to compromise. He is not going to change his mind. He is not going to bend down his word. And then we're going to say, when it has a heartbeat, ladies, can I ask you a question? You take a birth. Women can take a birth test. What is it called? Um, pregnancy test. Thank you. Birth test. <laughs> I'll mess with myself on that one. <laughs> a pregnancy test with a couple of weeks. The pregnancy test is telling you there's something signifying that there's life there. So that means whatever's there has told the test. Just like if you take a test for tuberculosis, if it come back negative, they're going to say, well, they, by the test, they know that you are, this is dwelling inside. They may not be able to tell from the outside, but because they took a test of your blood, they now, or they know that there's something dwelling in you. So you take a pregnancy test in two weeks, it don't have to have a heartbeat. Guess what? The hormone does not have revealed inside of your system, their life is there. Because it has attached itself to your uterus. And therefore, it has released something inside that says, I'm here. If that was not so, then they would not have to have a test to reveal that it's present. God told I'm just telling you how God showed you. Amen. Listen, listen. Let the message of the gospel, don't show me. Don't put it to the side. Don't fold under, because it's about to get here. It's a, it's, we're in a time that that message is not popular. You can say God all you want to, as long as you never talk about the Jesus. Because Jesus said, people say, he's not tolerant. That's interesting because Jesus is the manifested love of God. So what they're really saying is God's love is not tolerant. What I want, what I like, what I and what I love about God is, you can partake. God, God ain't mad at you if you had an abortion. Repent. Forgiveness is there for you too. I know I did it. Say, man, you yeah, man, you yeah, man. If a man, woman was pregnant and she got an abortion, guess what? That man had an abortion too. So God is forgiving and he will cleanse you of all unrighteousness. He will. He will. And there is no guilt in all that that comes along with that. You free. But when you really get free, you fight against it. Yes, yes. Not because they're going to say, who are you to fight against? I know I fight against it because that's what? I understand. Yes. But my fight is always with compassion and oh. blah, blah, because that's what God gave to me. Yes. Amen? Amen? Are we finished? That was it? Oh. We're two, we're two verses over girl. Verse 21. In this commandment have we from him. Here's the commandment. That he who loveth God love his brother also. So this is a commandment. This is New Testament. He who loves God must love his brother also. Go ahead. That's it. Come on, give God some praise. 